Hello everybody, this is Dilup and welcome back to my Factorio tutorial series. Today we're going to be continuing with our tutorial on the circuit network. We're going to be covering combinators as well as the power switch and the programmable speaker. Before we get started, I want to show something in the settings. Go to your settings, click interface, and click show combinator settings in alt mode. This is very useful and this is how I see the combinator signals here. So let's start with the arithmetic combinator. This combinator allows you to input a signal, do math on it, and then output either the same signal or a different signal. Let's check it out. So the different math operations that you can do on the arithmetic com combinator are multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, getting a remainder of an item, uh, putting it a power to something, so you can say like 10 to the power of 2. This is a bit shift left, a bit shift right. That has to do with binary and the AND, OR, and XOR operations. We're not going to cover these bottom five here. We're just going to be covering these. So if we set up a constant combinator, which we covered last episode, and we output a signal of red, let's give it a signal of 10, and tie this into this arithmetic combinator, and then tie the combinator to the pole so we can see it, we can do math on that number. Let's take the input signal of red and multiply it by 10 and then output it on a green signal. If we look at the pole, we see a green signal of 100. Well, what if we multiply it by 2? Then we get a green signal of 20. Well, you can also multiply it by a negative number. So you can put negative 1, and you get a signal of negative 10. What about division? Let's divide by 2. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now what happens if you divide by a number that doesn't go evenly into it? For instance, 4. What happens if we divide by 4? Well, 10 divided by 4 is actually 2.5. But we only get 2. The reason for this is the game will cut off the decimal place. It won't give you any kind of fractions of a number. It'll always just cut it off. It won't round at all, so it won't round up or down. It'll just cut off that number. So just keep that in mind. Uh, next we have addition, so 10 plus 2 is 14, sorry, 10 plus 4 is 14, 10 minus 4 is 6, and then we have the remainder. This is, uh, this does division as well. What it does is it divides the, the input by this number and then gives you the remainder of it. So 10 divided by 4 is 2 with a remainder of 2, so we get 2. If we give it the number 3, we should get... 3 with a remainder of 1 and we get 1. That's pretty useful too. Uh, next we have powers. So 10 to the power of 3. What it does is 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1000 and we get a signal of 1000. Okay, that's pretty much it for the arithmetic combinator. Let's move on to the decider combinator. There's two new uh, or three new signals that I want to cover real quick. Uh, these signals can also be used in the arithmetic combinator. Well, the each one can, the anything and everything cannot. What these do is everything will take all the input signals, and if it meets the condition, it will output true. Every single input signal must be true for it to equal true. That's why it says everything. Now, if it's also true if there are no inputs at all. Next, we have the anything signal. That This is if any of the input signals meet the condition, it will output true. But it will also output false if there are no signals, because nothing is, I'm sorry. It'll output false if there are no signals. <laughs> Next, we have each. Each evaluates every single one of the signals and then outputs based off of that one. We're going to use this on the arithmetic combinator when we're done with the decider combinator and show the way it works. So the decider combinator works similarly to the inserters and the lamps and all that. So it's got a parameter here, and if this parameter is true, it has an output. So let's set up a constant combinator and test this out. Let's put a red signal of 1 and tie it into the decider combinator, and then tie the decider combinator into the pole. If we check this signal and we say red is less than 0 to output a check mark as a 1, we can see that there is no check mark. But if we do set it to 0, we can see that now it is 
oh, it's not less than zero because it's equal to zero, we can see that we have a check mark. Now, on the output here, we have two different modes that we can output on. We either have one or an input count. Well, the input count will input the number, I'm sorry, the input count will input the signal if this is true. So let's set this to 10. Well, right now, if we look at it, there is no output on the check mark. The reason for this is it has to be the specific signal. So if we output a red input count, we're getting an input of 10 on the red signal, and it is true, we now output 10 on the red. If I were to add a separate signal here of a check mark and set it to 2000, and then input the check mark as input count, then we get the input of or the output of 2000. Sorry if that was a little bit confusing. Basically, what it does is it takes the signal and will output whatever number is on that signal already. If you set it to one, it will simply output a one of this signal. You'll get it a little bit more by playing with it. So that's it for the combinators. I want to take a look at the arithmetic combinator one last time because there's that signal that we didn't cover. So let's set up a constant combinator here. And let's set a red, a green, and a blue signal and give these all different numbers. Let's give the red a 10, let's give the green one a 2, and the blue one a 5. Well, what we can do is tie this into the arithmetic combinator, tie the combinator to the pole, and then do some math on these. We can take each input signal and then times it by 2 and then send it as an output of each. And what this does is it will take every signal that this is receiving, multiply it by 2, and then output every signal again. So we get a signal of 20, 10, and 4. What happens if you output this on a yellow signal, for instance? What we end up getting is 34. The reason you're getting this signal is because what it's doing is it's multiplying each of these by 2 and then adding them all together. So it's taking 10 times 2 is 20, and then 2 times 2 is 4, so it's taking 24, and then adding 10 to it, which is 34. And that's what it's outputting, 34. There's, pretty, there's a pretty useful use for this, pretty useful use, I like it, um, that we'll be covering next episode to make a smarter base. Next, let's cover the power switch. The power switch works as a power switch. Let's go ahead and disconnect this cable here from this power line, and then connect the power switch to it. Right now it's a little bit backwards because the connection didn't make it the way I wanted to. Let's, uh, let's do that. <laughs> um, let's put a machine on this and just set a recipe on it. Right now you see it has no power. That's because the switch is in this off state. If we turn it on, the machine gets power. Turn it off again, it cuts off the power. Well, you can control this with the circuit network. If we tie a cable to it on this constant combinator and give it a signal of red, we have this enable condition. Right now it's set to is it's not set to anything, but we can set it to red is greater than zero, it'll turn it on, and it gets power. If we set red to zero, it will no longer get power. What if we set it to negative one? Well, if red's negative one, it's not greater than zero. If we set it to 50, it is greater than zero, and it gets power again. Pretty useful. I don't personally use it, but I can see some uses for it. Next, we have the programmable speaker. I'm going to actually show a practical use for this one on this build that we set up in the last tutorial. So we set up this build in the last tutorial to read the belt contents and to see if this is a fully compressed belt. Currently it's displaying a signal of 8, which is a fully compressed belt, since 8 items fit on a transport belt. Well we can use combinator logic and the programmable speaker to give us an audi uh, audi audible, I'm sorry, an audible and a visual representation of whether this is on whether it is fully compressed. So let's set up a lamp here and a speaker. Let's take the cable from the transport belt and tie it into both of these combinators. Then let's take the output of the combinators together, tie it into the light, and tie it into the speaker. So then if we set these decider combinators, we can set everything. So if everything is less than eight, then output a red one. And then we can say if anything 
is greater than or equal to 8, then you can output a green one. We can set this lamp to be always on and to use colors. To set it always on, we can just hit a, a signal of 0 and say if it's equal to 0. So right now we're having a green light. And the reason for that is this belt is fully compressed. If we were to stand here and eat up all the iron ore, it's no longer fully compressed, which makes it flash red. Cool, let's set up the speaker. The speaker is pretty cool. It's got a couple of settings here that we can take a look at. If we look at the volume, this sets the volume of the speaker. Global playback makes it so that the speaker sounds across the entire world rather than you having to be close to it. And then we have show alert. Showing alert, what this does is it'll show an alert on the signal. Let's say D and we can type the alert. And we'll demonstrate that when we get into it. Next, we have allow polyphony. This allows 10 sounds to be played at the same time. This is useful if you're trying to like make a song with the programmable speakers. We have this check mark, which says the value of the input circuit signal determines the musical note that'll be played. That's for, again, making songs and stuff. Next, we have the, um, I'm sorry, this is the, the test that will determine whether the sound is playing. So we have multiple sounds here. We, they are listed in categories. I'm getting all tongue-tied here. Give me one second. Okay, so talking for 10 minutes straight can get you all tongue-tied. Let's try that again. So this is the, uh, I'm still not coming up with the word for it now. This is basically how you turn on the signal. You can say whether, okay, I had to pause the recording again. It's the condition. I'm not sure why I could not think of it, but this is the condition that will turn on the signal. I'm going to leave that in the, uh, in the video. I'm not going to actually remove that out, but yes, this is the condition that will turn on the, the speaker. Uh, all the sounds that the speaker can play are listed here in categories. We have alarms, miscellaneous drum kit, piano, bass, and all kinds of other stuff. In alarms, we have basic alarms. And miscellaneous, these are uh, sounds that like the game uses, and a lot of these are pretty cool. I like to use this alarm here. It's called buzzer 3, and it's just a simple beep. So next, we can do the uh, condition here, and we can say if red is greater than zero to sound the alarm. And we set here, if red, uh, if anything on the belt was less than eight, it would output a signal of one on the red. So now, if we come over here and pick up the or, and this is no longer a fully compressed belt, it'll flash the light red and beep the speaker. So pretty useful. Uh, it also shows an alert that says test alert, and that's because I set it up here. <laughs> so that's a use for the programmable speaker that I like to use when I'm testing builds. For instance, when I was building this on my stream yesterday for my main base, I needed to test whether it was getting full compression. Well, I did that by setting up that combinator and reading this belt, and it would beep at me if it wasn't fully compressed because I was having some issues getting full, full, full compression out of it. But then I was able to blueprint it and take it into my world, and everything worked great. So that's one of the main uses for the speaker, the main uses that I use. Anyways, that's it for this episode, guys. Sorry about that blunder with that the conditions there, but all in all, fairly easy episode. I don't like to re-record these, and I don't like to script them so much, so I kind of just wing it, believe it or not, and uh, this is what I end up with, and I don't really edit either. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. On to the next episode, where we will be designing a smarter base. Um, this is... We'll, we'll, like, we'll get into it next episode. Anyways, stay tuned. We'll catch you later. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe and check out my Twitch, which is in the bottom left-hand corner, as well as in the description. Catch you all later.